Hello everyone! We still have a couple minutes to go before things start, but it's nice to see people coming in. Hello! Oh, thanks, Soupy. Soupy Mir. Hi, Paul Coffart. And it's a multi-dimensional fox. Hello! I think this is going to be a really exciting time. Ooh, breathing into the mic. How is this? Is this any better? I need to get... Excellent. I need to get like a um, one of those fancy conference mics that picks up while not being in right in front of your mouth. I have a friend who has one because they do a lot of telecons and they are marvelous, but they're also like 200 bucks, so. I think this is going to be a lot of fun fights. Uh, I was looking through just the ship compositions. I haven't actually looked at the variants, le variants yet, but a lot of people changed their fleets. Uh, let's see. No, I actually don't have any filter on this. This is just a really cheap headset. I put, um... Hmm. I put some software filters in with OBS to cut down on background noise, and they work okay, but they're not as good as having, like, a good mic. Hi, Sunders. How are you doing? Ah, pop filters. I should get I should get one of those and see how see if it stops the breathing noises. I got mine really really cheap. I should get a better. I should get a better headset. All right, we're about one minute from starting. And I see people filtering in. We're getting there. Hi, Mac Blaze. How's it going? I should just put some foam on the end of this and uh it is time it is nine seconds past time all right everyone welcome to the seventh star sector ai fleet building tournament for those of you who don't know this is a tournament where players submit their fleets and then they fight against each other on ai control and between rounds they're allowed to switch between um pre-submitted variants and they have one new variant and this is going to come up a lot in this round because a lot of people have changed their ships. So we are going to be streaming both the upper round, upper bracket round three, and lower bracket round two. So there is eight fights to watch today. So first fight of the night will be Johan versus Surge. Now I think Johan's fleet might be the same. But let me take a look, and let's go over the variants. So starting off, we have the Hammer Destroyer, Hammerhead. 
and a lot of kinetic damage. We have an HMG, four light dual machine guns, an assault chain gun for HE, and some Atropos for the finish. With safety overrides, just enough vents for the weapon flux, and the rest into capacitors. Ooh, sound is kind of low. How's that? Is that any better? Overlay! I always forget the overlay. There we go. My goodness, everyone take a drink. Overlay! All right, let's start over with these variants now that people can see. This is an SO hammerhead with lots of kinetic damage. It has a heavy machine gun, four light dual machine guns, an assault chain gun for HE damage, and two Atropos for the kill. It has just enough vents for the weapon flux and the rest into caps. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those hammerheads, and the rest are Falcon Peas. These Falcon Peas have Sabos in the front for the kinetic overload, Typhoon Reapers in the rear for HE follow-up, and Atropos for gu guided HE follow-up. It has the Missile Boosters, both Expanded Racks and ECCM, Hardened Shields, and 16 Capacitors to give it quite some tank. And let's see, how are the weapon groups? The weapon groups are alternating, so these missiles are alternating. One, two, three, four of those. So eight hammerheads, four falcons. And I'm just going to reset just in case. Now we have Surge. Surge, who has retitled their fleet, notices your SO. Mm -hmm. So Surge has submitted almost an entirely new fleet to attempt to counter this SO spam. Let's take a look. Now we have... Uh, an omen, an escort omen, with PD lasers, swarmer, hardened subsystems, hardened shields, and auxiliary thrusters. So this will be able to dart around quite a bit. And I think this is a previous variant, because players are only allowed one new variant. Next up is the overdriven Medusa. So this is a safety overrides Medusa with railguns on the front, two ion cannons, and two heavy blasters. Nine vents, six caps. Even with safety overrides, it's very outfluxed but it'll be able to dump a lot of damage with these heavy blasters. And it'll be very fast. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Surge is going all in on these hammerhead on these Medusas to counter the hammerheads. Another of their escort omens. Here is a Heron. Heron with two longbows and a Cobra. So bombers are good on Herons because their subsystem is targeting feed which improves the damage. So we have the kinetic overload and then the Cobra Strike, which with this system I think will do 6,000 damage on a hit. And we've expanded deck, deck crews and an HVD for poking. We have a Vortex with a Falk Super Interceptor and a Drake Assault Interceptor. Both ship and weapon pack fighters and the time acceleration field will make those speedier. Now this has tactical lasers for standoff poking, expanded deck crew, and vents and caps. Two more of the omens. So to summarize, Johan has eight hammerheads, four falcons, SO, and missiles. Surge has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight SO Medusas. So it's Medusas on hammerhead, eight on eight four omens, and then filling up the seven, oh, nope, just five, some, f some fighter support. All right. So let's have our first fight, Johan versus Surge. From the south, this Midline abomination comes storming north. Hammerheads are pulling ahead just a little bit. From the north, we have... There's that lone Medusa. That lone Medusa is moving forward. But it's backing up a little bit. It's not going to come in alone. All right. Medusas and hammerheads are about to clash. So far, nothing. Just a few missiles. There we go! An 
inconclusive so far. Oh, on this side we have a Medusa got to, gets mauled a little bit, but it gets away, and then the Omen gets some disabling. Oh, Medusa hits the side of the Hammerhead. So this Hammerhead's engines are down. This Medusa's flux is lowering. Is it going to move in and get the kill, or is it too scared of two Hammerheads? It needs to move in. Oh, why isn't it moving in? Oh, that was a major AI screw-up. The Hammerhead had no engines. This Medusa could have done it easily. All right. It looks like these Medusas can kill these Hammerheads in one-on-one. -on -one. Let's see what the rest of the fight is looking like, where things are more complicated. On this side, a Medusa is getting 2v1'd, but it is faster with its system. So far, so good. Let's see. Sabos. Sabos are probably going to burn out. Yes, they burned out. Oh, two-on-one Medusas and the Omen, but the engines are still online. So far, it looks like these Medusas are a counter to SO Hammerheads. They are... The Medusas are just winning all of their duels. Yep, and there's a kill. I am very impressed with this Medusa loadout. If you had asked me before, I would have said, Nah, Medusas are good, but they can't take a Hammerhead at one-on-one. -on -one. These Medusas can take a Hammerhead one-on-one. -on -one. The duels are finishing up on the edges of the map, and the main bodies of the fleets are fighting. Let's see, where's that Cobra? That, that's a miss from the Cobra. Medusa's giving ground over here. They are just a little faster than these Hammerheads. Ooh, three Medusas coming in. Now it's five on two. Oh, this is the superior mobility from the Flux Skimmer and then the heavy, the heavy strikes from the heavy blasters. These are excellent Medusa loadouts. This is, uh, I'm going to have to try these in campaign. Those are really nice. Meanwhile, the omens are distracting. Ooh, four Sabos. That's the overload. And Atropos for the finish. Omen down. On this side, the Sabos are just, Medusas have very strong shields. And these are unlinked Sabos, so they only fire two at a time. Now here, here's four. We'll see if that's an overload. These Reapers, these the Reapers are just too slow and they have no tracking. The Reapers are not going to hit a, hammer, a uh, Medusa. Those twin ion cannons doing their job. That's flamed out. Missiles are, weapons are offline. These Medusas are dominant. Over here we have a duel and we know how duels end between these two ship classes. Now, both of these carriers are still standing. It seems like the Medusa and Omen screening stopped any of those SO ships from getting to the backline carriers. Is that Cobra going to get the finish? I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for that Cobra. Well, it fired it anyway for an extra 10,000 damage. <laughs> or it should have been 6,000. So this was a shocking reversal where SO Hammerheads, even SO Hammerheads with so much kinetic damage, could not beat these Medusa variants. These Medusas are truly excellent. A solid victory for Surge. All right, next up is Vera versus Paul Coffart. Now, this is, uh, for, for those of you who haven't watched before, Vera is probably, is considered the tournament favorite because of their strong showing and in testing how utterly dominant this fleet is. Let me go over Vera's fleet. So there, the core of this fleet is a whole bunch of Falcon Peas with Sabos for the Overload, Harpoons for the follow-up, and then Reapers for the close range kill. Now the main difference between this variant and the last variant is both using Harpoons instead of Reapers, and we saw last match how the Reapers without tracking really just they couldn't hit fast ships. But the other thing is that these weapon groups are linked. 
So these sabos will always fire four at a time. The harpoons will always fire eight at a time. And the reapers give a super ride wide bracketing fire of two reapers. So even if you dodge one, you're probably going to get hit by the second. Now, this has hardened shields and max capacitors for actually a very tanky little ship. Medium ship. Now, the other seven of these of these falcons have the same weapon loadout, but they're using wasps as converted hangers instead of hardened shields. So a little bit less tanky, but the wasps provide very much needed interceptor cover, and they should stop enemy fighters. Backing up these falcons are wonderful omens, strike omens. These are my favorite omens. They have an AM blaster and a reaper. That might seem not enough, but you have to remember they also have their EMP emitters and those will lock down chips and also do a decent amount of hard flux damage to shields. Now it has max caps and hardened shields, which gives the ship effectively 10,000 shield hit points with a 360 shield. And that's, so like these omens have 10,000 shield hit points each. Hardened subsystems to make it last longer, unstable injector so it can really dart around ships and disable them, and a resistant flux conduit so it can get back into the fight faster on event. One, two, three, four, five, six of those omens. So eight falcons and six omens for Vera's fleet. Facing them is, pa is Paul Coffart with his victorious victory that has been doing a very good job. This victory is ringed in burst PD lasers, which has been very effective versus missiles and mines so far. Four HVDs for long range kinetic fire, two heavy needlers for slightly closer range, more, effici more efficient burst fire, some hellbores for armor penetration in the back, the built-in HE guns in the front, ITU, 50 vents, and 36 capitals. Just a very solid victory that so far has, so far it's steamrolled its opponents, but we'll see how it does with this missile rush. It looks like there are monitors, more monitors than last time, I think. They are extended shields for 360, they've got their built-in flax, and they've got pokes. I'm guessing the strategy for these monitors is to just try and tank those sabos for long enough. And if they can um, if they can tank for long enough, then the enemy then Vayra's fleet will run out of missiles. I see three drovers, super escorts, with Falk super interceptors, and expanded deck crew. And one, two, three, four, five, six, oop. Five of them are Escort Omens with Burst PDs, Swarmers, Resistant Flux Conduit, Hardened system, Subsystems, Unstable Injector. These have, um, in addition to the EMP emitter, when the EMP emitter is on cooldown, they should be able to shoot down some missiles. And they have some vents and some capacitors. They're not as tough as the other Omens, but they're, they're moderately tough. And we have some Ion Omens. So again, when the EMP emitter is on cooldown, it still has ion damage. So if it gets the chance, this is relentless lockdown. With some sabos, because why not? All right, those are the fleets. We have Vera's Crimes Against Star Sector fleet versus Paul Coffart's Victory and Frigate Support and Destroyers. Let us fight. Here come the Falcons from the south. And the Omen's leading the way. It's actually a little bit of a pity that these monitors are slow, because it would have been uh, it would have been better for the monitors to go first. Alright, this omen is coming down. But it didn't uh, it didn't run in all by itself. Interceptors are here. The interceptors are going to start engaging the wasps. It looks like the falcs are actually tearing up the wasps pretty well. You have to remember that those wasps are converted hangar, so they have less hit points. Ooh, okay, there's some reapers and sabos. So there's the first overload. And here come, here come the harpoons. Here is only one hit, but here's another salvo. Let's see. Oh, this is, this is actually really good. So the burst PD... The Burst PD and the Falks have saved the Drover. This is the first time we've ever seen those Harpoons stopped in a fight. That's actually really impressive. This fleet is standing up 
much better than previous fleets. This Falcon is surrounded, but it's not much firepower around it. Just, uh, just some poking. Oh, the victory! The victory is engaging a Falcon. It's fired its own harpoons. And the harpoons are some, some impact. Let's see. The burst PDs did not stop the Sabos. They just, uh, they weren't quite enough. But so far, this victory is holding off Falcons, and they're wasting their Sabos on it. And it's managing to vent off the Sabo barrages. If it can hold out for long enough... Yep, it just, it, it just destroyed the Sabos. The victories destroyed the Sabos. This is going extremely well for Paul Coffart's fleet so far. Every missile barrage that doesn't do anything is a victory. And if it gets enough of those little victories, it will outlast these Falcons and it'll win. One of Vera's omens is down. I didn't see where that happens. Oh, no, no, this is Paul Coffart's omens. Ooh, talk two of Paul's omens and a monitor are down. So the victory is doing extremely well. Ooh, is, there, is this Hellbors? Hellbor 2? Not quite. Not quite a kill. Really close, though. Those heavy needlers with their, al with their alpha damage. Yeah, this victory is very vulnerable to omens. It needs to be able to hold off the omens on the side. Here are these Falk Super Interceptors. Oh, look, you can see this. Just so many hit points here. This has taken probably 8,000 armor damage. Oh, the victory is turning. Ooh, this is not great. Oh, but all the all the Sabots were shot down. So far, this so far this victory is a counter for the Falcons. Sabo impacts, not great. They knocked out a lot of guns. Those guns need to come back online. Now this Falcon is almost dead. That's a Falcon down. Oh, there's that Sabo intercept. Oh, Reapers! Reapers got shot down by the Falks! The Reapers, the Falks saved the victory from a heavy Reaper shot. Oh, this is, it's, 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 it's weapons are down. The EMP, the EMP from the Sabos, it needs its weapons to come back online, especially its burst PD lasers. Now, however, the omens on the sides are cleaning up. Paul Coffart's fleet is getting whittled away by the omens. I haven't been focusing on them, but the spike omens have been winning. Yeah, so, so over here... Oh, this victory. This victory is so solid. This victory is tanking all of these... All of these Falcons. It, it's 55 deployment points, and it was tanking six, six Falcons at the same time. But unfortunately, it's over. It lost its companions to the Omens. And once its companions were done, it just got flanked to death. So that is by far the strongest fleet I have seen against Veyras, but it was just not enough. So it almost held out. In the end, it only had one kill, but that was a very, very strong showing by Paul. Woo! I wish I'd, I wish I'd focused a little more on the omens. <laughs> The, these omens definitely won it by securing the flanks. All right. Next up is Kissimmees versus Symbols. Symbols with the, with the famous crack shipping fleet and Kissimmees with Kissa and Co. Space Repo. So let's look. I think this is a new... Yeah, this Paragon is new. Let's take a look at the variants. So Kissa is inbound with a rapid fire through your rapid fire through your something battleship. I'm actually not sure what that says. I can't read it. <laughs> so this has two auto pulses in the front. We've seen those prove very effective. Ion beams, antimatter blasters, heavy needlers for the kinetic, and tachyon lances for that burst kill. It has 
Some burst PD along the sides and rear, and hammers! Hammers in the missiles. Expanded magazines is going to help the autopulse and I guess the AM blasters, but I'd be very supply surprised if AM blasters run through 20 charges. Advanced optics is going to help the tachyon lances and these burst PDs. Stabilize shields because it's a paragon. Flux distributor for more flux. And hardened shields to make this very tanky. Next, we have some Bulrock, Bulwark Albatross Destroyers with the Kinetic HE combo, Heavy Auto Cannon and Heavy Mortar with some Annihilators. And as a reminder, these come with built-in flak drones. With reinforced bulkhead and heavy armor on top of the built-in blast doors, these are pretty tanky, especially for Destroyer, and with its damper field. And has ITU for some range, so these should last quite a long time. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six of those. And some omens! Smite omens! With hammers again, backed up by expanded missile racks, so four hammers, an IR pulse laser, and a burst PD. And max caps, not hardened shields, but still very tanky. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. Alright, so we have Paragon, Destroyer Escorts, and eight omens on the flanks. Up against Symbols is Crack Shipping. Let's go over Crack Shipping, another fan favorite of fanfiction pairings. So we have the Han Londo Nautilus with its light phase lances for burst anti-armor. We have the Kirk Spock Cersei with its kiting with its extreme range. It's a cruiser, so ITU is 40% on top of this. So these are 1600 range kiting on a pretty speedy frame. Plasma Jetson's top speed 90. And Harpoons for the kill. So two of those. We have the Snape Dumbledore with a Falx, a Pylum, and two LMGs. And extreme modifications to make that fit. Expanded disc deck crew and the ECM package nav relay for the support. Another Cersei. The Harry Draco, which is very, very similar to Snape Dumbledore, which is fitting as they're both Harry Potter. Um, and it's using a Thunder instead of a Falx. So what would be the hat? Like an Astral is a Hagrid? No, no. A, um, I think like a Prometheus Mark II would be a Hagrid. So who's Hagrid paired with? Sorry, sorry, I can't get distracted. Next up, we have another Kirksbach Cersei, another Han Londo, a Holmes Watson, with extreme modifications to fit in two daggers, another Kirk Spock kiting Cersei, another Snape Dumbledore, and a Buckbeak. Yes, so if there's a Prometheus Mark II, it would be the Haggard Buckbeak. But instead, we have the C3PO R2D2 Atlas Mark II. And this has been crazy to say, one of the most solid combat capitals so far. With two Gauss cannons backed up by accelerated ammo feeder two Hurricane Mervs, and ITU, Gunnery Control AI, Shield Bypass, Advanced Charge Jaws, and Armored Weapon Mounts. The only thing that's a little worry, worrying about this is that it has, it has Shield Bypass, but that Paragon has Tachyons and Advanced Optics. So that's 2200 range Tachyons versus, I think, 1960 range Gauss Cannons, if I'm not mistaken. So this could be a problem if the, if the Paragon... If the Paragon disables this front side with the um, with the Tachyon Lances. And finishing up the, of the fleet, a Snape Dumbledore, another Han Londo, and a Harry Draco. A lot of soft flux. Soft flux is a... Uh, might be a problem. Oh, I see. Wait a second. Symbols meant to drop it. Was that a change that they did that... Um, did they do that change and then it didn't go through? Or... Like, did they submit it? Or did they not submit it? Hold on, I'm going to pause for just a second. Vera just... or not Vera. Astralter just pinged me. Astralter... Astralter keeps, keeps calling me. So, quick pause while we sort out whether we have symbols as fleet correctly.
Okay, there's been a slight problem. Astralter is telling me that both Symbols and KM's fleet got lost. Um, so we are going to pause for just a moment. We should all talk about the previous round. Um, and... Astralter is going to send me the new files. Da, 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 da. So I apologize for everyone who's watching. Um, yeah, we haven't we haven't done the match yet. People spoke up, and as soon as I get the new files, I am going to I am going to uh, to change those in, and then we'll have it. Okay, Symbols just sent me the fleet. Yeah, that victory, that victory was extremely good. Um, really, if it if the flanks hadn't fallen, that victory could have held, held could have held out. Just really, really good. Okay, I apologize for the volume going down. I am. All right, symbols. The, the file you sent me is called Player Zero Fleet. Your fleet number is not zero. Your fleet number is something. Ten. Okay. Oh. All right. So there was a problem with that fleet file. This is why I do checks beforehand. Um, but it looks like I didn't have quite the rest. Oh, um, okay. Da -da. So do I need a new variant for that fleet? Because I am now getting a loading error, a loading error. Um, Kissimmee's your fleet is also says fleet zero. You are player number two. All right. Oh, I'm watching the viewer numbers go down. Viewer numbers are going down. Okay, so Kiss's fleet is loading, but um, Symbols, your fleet is not loading. Do you need to send me a new variant? <laughs> Checking files. Fixing the is flagship issue in the fleet file. Da, da, da. Okay, file headers should now be correct. Um. All right, let me quickly quickly pull up more fleet, another fleet to check the headers. Yes, the header the headers are incorrect in the file. I am swapping out the headers. And I'm still not getting loading. I will now check the log file so folks can uh folks can listen to real-time tournament debugging. Real time tournament debugging. Tournament debugging. So 
So why don't you all talk about uh, the previous uh, previous thing? All right. <laughs> yeah. I just got another set of files. I will now sub those in. Well, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to do this anyway. So I'm gonna give this. I'm gonna give this one more shot, and then we uh, we might call a mulligan for for this one. Um. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to call a mulligan, and we're gonna we're gonna proceed to the next match because there's. Uh, too many technical difficulties here. I can't get it to work. So, we are moving on. Uh, unfortunately. All right, moving on. We are skipping um, Symbols versus Kissimmees. Because something, something's just not right. And we're moving on to Soup versus Safari John. So, let's see. Soup has changed out a lot, having Paragon and Tempests. So let us take a look at these, this fleet. So, here is a... Oh, this is a, this is a crazy Paragon. So we have the Auto Pulses up front, but we don't have Heavy Needlers. These are lightning guns, so longer ranged, but not kinetic. So this is going to have trouble getting through shields. It really is. And we have paladins on the side. Now, paladins are unique point defense that can shoot over allied ships. So they're really good for um, very long range area denial point defense. But again, not much damage. And a ring of tack lasers and burst PD. Tack lasers are, are backed up by advanced optics. IPDAI, let's see, shield conversion front, that's interesting, and stabilized shields. That gives very low very low shield flux per second, but it also stops the ability of the ship to um, to turn its shields. Um, now here's the interesting thing. Advanced optics lowers the turn rate of turrets, and tachy tactical lasers already have a horrible problem with IPDAI. They tend to extend, lose tracking, and then break tracking and need to re-extend again. So uh, we'll see if I'm wrong, but these tactical lasers might actually be useless for PD. We'll see. If they're if they're useful, this is a point defense powerhouse. But if what ha if what I think happens happens, they are not going to work. We'll see. We'll see if they work. All right. Next up are some of these Kefka enforcers. This is the unfazed battleship. These Kefka enfor enforcers were very effective in previous rounds with light dual machine guns for kinetic and plasma fa flamers for DACA, and two of these Kefkas. Now we have Tempests, Yorick Tempests with pulse lasers, safety overrides, and auxiliary thrusters. These are 60 seconds, well, 59 seconds, of blazing fury with two pulse lasers backed up by high energy focus and 230 plus 50, 280 speed Tempests. These are so fast. Wait, is your motif, mojo fly says Thago, this is the wrong fleet? Do it, is, is there another fleet file problem? Or is this correct? Ah, uh, okay. Um, that's that's not very nice. I have the wrong files. Um, all right. All right. Um, yeah. Okay. So, all right. I don't. I don't check. I don't. I don't get submitted to. People submit to Astralter, so I have no ability to check these beforehand. The, the fleet files I have are the fleet files that I'm using. Um. Oh. Okay. So, Soup. Soup, is your fleet correct? I'm just swapping out Safari Johns. 
Safari John has sent me a another fleet. Um, subbing in Safari John. Uh, this is not going smoothly like previous uh, like previous rounds. And let's see. And here's another another player ten. Putting the player ten in. And what else what else have I been sent? Player two. Player two fleet just got sent to me. Okay. Um, so I am going to rely on you all to yell at me whenever this comes up because I've just subbed in a lot of files and I don't know if, you know, I just subbed in the files I'm sent. So, okay, it looks like crack shipping is now loading. And. And the clowns are now loading. So do these ships look these these ships look correct? <laughs> the, these these fleets look correct? Okay. Since I just read off the changes to Soup's fleet, I'm gonna move on to Safari John. So to summarize Soup's fleet again, um we have a point defense paragon two of these rushing SO enforcers and a whole lot of SO tempests. <laughs> all right. Seriously though, all right, it's like it's like oh no, he read off he read off someone else's fleet. It's different. Quick, send in the new fleet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and and Doom Safari has changed and let's look at Doom Safari's new fleet. All right, so Safari John has a conquest. Let's take a look at this conquest. This conquest has right side point defense with four flak cannons. All right, so this is standard asymmetric, asymmetric kill and flak with tactical lasers around the outside. So not, not beam point defense, just a beam anti-fighter. And uh, let's see, two single sabos. Is that what this is? No, these are just empty, sorry. Okay, these are just empty, sorry. We have a Squall and Hurricane missiles on the front, Ion Pulsar, and two Mjolnirs. So no kinetic damage other than the Squall, but quite a lot of Ion and a lot of, um, a lot of dependable energy backed up by dual flax. Now this has blast doors. Why would you put blast doors on and not reinforce bulkheads? Aren't in a tournament aren't blast doors just worse reinforced bulkheads? Am I missing something there? Ah, they're less they're five less OP. Huh. Okay. We have some balanced hammerheads with heavy auto cannons, light assault guns, harpoons, and Vulcans. This is a classic kinetic and HE combo with unstable injector and ITU. So it's interesting. The uh, the ITU is just going to cancel out the penalty from unstable injector and add just five percent. So this will be a normal speed, but twenty five. Sorry, normal range, but twenty faster hammerhead. And one, two, three of those. We have some support mules with annihilator, annihilator, annihilator for lots of HE and some. Point defense with expanded miss missile racks and the ECM nav relay combo on a destroyer. So 3% from both of them. One, two, three of those. And oh, some some shades. So a phase ship with the EMP emitter with a very strange loadout, but it should work. We have Sabos for the overload, antimatter blaster for the spike, swarmers for the anti frigate. Now, swarmers are excellent anti frigate, and two IR pulse lasers. Two of those. We have a strike afflictor with. Ion torpedo racks for the sable and antimatter blasters for the for the hit and max caps. Um, some SO hammerheads with heavy machine gun, two light dual machine guns, and the assault chain gun with hammers with way too much flux. Way too much flux. 
This has nearly twice the dissipation that it should, but that's okay. It means that when it turns its shields down, it'll uh, it'll be able to get back up to full in five seconds. Two of those and one more support mule. So we have looked through the fleets. We are finally ready to go, and I'm hitting I'm hitting go before you can tell me that the fleet files are wrong again. Haha! <laughs> the match has started. No stopping it now. From the south, we have. Um, Paragon coming up slowly, and then the Esso ships charging ahead. There is a heavy escort order on the Paragon that the AI has put on. We'll see what that does. From the north, fleet is clustering together. One phase ship is skirmishing a little bit. It's going to run, run, run headlong into the Tempest's drones. And we have the engagement. Here come these destroyers. The destroyers are... Ooh, they've uh, got pushed back and took quite a lot of hull damage. But here is this conquest. Firing its weapons, firing its missiles. Quite a bit of hull damage and pushed it back again. On the right-hand flank, we have the Tempest swarming a hammerhead. The hammerhead is trying its hardest... But it's really, it's having a lot of trouble with these two. It's not getting much help from its fellow Hammerhead. The Conquest is now being swarmed, but so far so good. Ooh, this Enforcer is pinned between the Conquest and the Hammerhead. So far this Conquest is actually doing extremely well. There's the Vent, but there's no Missiles. There's no missiles inbound. If they were Reapers or Harpoons... Oh, there goes a Tempest! Popped! On this side, the Tempests are chewing away at the mules. But the Tempests, they only have 60 seconds. And they're not getting fast kills. A lot of guns down on the Conquest. The Paragon so far hasn't done anything. It's too slow. The Paragon is just too slow. Let's see. Some duels out on the edges on frigates. Let's get back to the main action. The mule has been killed by the Tempests. Tempest CR is going down. Down to 60% each. Oop. The Conquest has gotten a little too close. It's engaging the Paragon now, which is not great. But that Paragon has, has no kinetics, so it's having some trouble bringing the shields down. Well, not that much trouble. I don't think this Conquest has hardened shields. This Conquest needs to activate its system and back off. Um, unfortunately, it's kind of focusing on the... on the Enforcer. Now, this is, um... This Hammerhead, I'm not... I'm not really sure what this Hammerhead is doing. Um, it's just kind of hanging out, not doing anything. On this side... Hammerhead is facing off against one Tempest and one Enforcer. Over here... Oh, this, this Tempest has, like, no hit points left. But it's flanking. Ooh, very close. Close match. Close match between this one Hammerhead and these two Tempests. The Tempests are losing CR steadily. They're down to 44%. Let's see. The, con the Conquest has finally finally killed an enforcer. Oh no, that was the hammerhead that died. Never mind. The conquest is just it's it got too close to the ha too close to the paragon. That's just that's just an AI problem. Conquest is fast enough to avoid paragons. It hasn't even fired at it yet. That's zero hard flux damage. So the conquest simply ignored the paragon to its death. It was doing extremely well before that. Ooh, on this side, Hammerhead mauls the Enforcer. I thought there were only two Enforcers. Is it really only two of them? And they both are still alive? That's really well done. So CR problems are starting, and if that if that conquest had stayed away from the Paragon. It probably would have won, but just the AI simply, it didn't even acknowledge it. 
the AI got close to the Paragon and then focused on the Enforcer. Um, I wonder if it was Reckless AI. This Hammerhead is going to beat this Enforcer, but it's taking its time. Yep, there we go. Enforcer down. The Tempests are in danger of critical malfunctions, but these phase frigates that have been kiting them aren't any better. And in fact, it's down to 2%, 1% out of CR. So that shade is, that shade is going to die. Yes, I don't think anything can take down this Paragon. It's not, uh, it's not even like the most crazy Paragon. It's simply the Conquest never fired a shot at it. On this side, we have a Hammerhead, which is still staying strong against the Tempests. So really, the Hammerheads have been the star of the show for this fleet. Um... Yep, just two hammerheads left. I think it's probably going to take down both these tempests. The other hammerhead is down. This this match is decided, but let's just see uh let's see how this last hammerhead does. I'm disappointed in the AI performance of that conquest. It could have done so much better if it had just kited the Paragon. Or just stayed away. Alright, let's speed up time. Tempest killed by friendly fire. And actually, they should be suffering from critical malfunctions. So they might... Yep, that one exploded on its own. How about this one? Critical malfunction? Nope. Oh. There we go. That is the fight. <laughs> All right. So a very close match. Honestly, this conquest just just AI derped, and this Paragon was too strong. All right. Now let's go back to the previous match that I missed, Kissimmee's versus Symbols. Now, is this the correct fleets? I've been giving, like, four different fleet files for both of them. So, this better be the correct fleets. Alright, I don't see anyone screaming about wrong fleets, so let's do this. On Kissimmee's side, we have... Ooh, Shrikes! Fascinating! So Kissa has removed their Paragon. There are two... Talons! They're using Talons! Let's see, these are gun you down in the street like the degenerate you are. Oh, insulting! <laughs> Moras with Sabo, Reaper combo, Railguns and Contenders, so a lot of Kinetic HE, Expanded Missile Racks, Safety Overrides! Yes! I love Safety Overrides, Moras. And three Talon Wings. Oh, jeez, Talon Wings. Well, they're cheap? Sure. Let's do it. Safety Overrides Moras. Two of them. Next up is the Safety Overrides Vanguard, the minigun class. With, let's see, some forward-facing point defense and a Mjolnir cannon up front. Alrighty then. Quite a lot of DPS for the one mount. One, two, three, four, five, six of those, and then some Shrikes. These are... Sabo and AM Blaster Pulse Laser Shrikes. That's interesting. Most people do uh, most people do a Heavy Blaster. We'll see how Pulse plus AM does with one Burst PD and one Ion Cannon. All right, and Expanded Missile Racks with Caps and Vents. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those. So we have two SO Cruisers and then... Yes, that's 13 other ships, 13 destroyers, to bring us up to the 15 ship limit, and 6 fighter wings. Next up is fan favorite, crack shipping! I already went over crack shipping, but let me go over them again. 
Um, we have the Kirk Spock Beam Circe, the Snape Dumbledore with its Falks, the Harry Draco with its Thunder, another Kirk Spock um, Beam Circe, um, another Snape Dumbledore, another Circe, the Han Londo with its Light Phase Lances Burst, Carrier, Beams, Carrier, Beams, Beams, Carrier, Beams. So going all in on the beam spam, taking out that beautiful fire support ship. All right, it's finally time to do Kiss Me's versus Symbols. From the south, in come the wide fleet of cruisers and destroyers. There's that swarm of Talon on S.O. Moras. Now, a nice thing about S.O. Moras is that they can deploy their fighters without losing the zero flux bonus. So they can both kite and charge with their fighters active. Then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carriers backing up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven beam cruisers and the one lone Nautilus. Here's this beam. The Shrikes are charging in. Some Sabos have fired. And it is Talons versus Falxes. Oh, and the Wasps. Oh, the Wasps just tore the Talons to pieces. These little bombs from the Wasps do not, do not pull punches. Let's see. So far, this fleet is, it's trying to close. So far, it hasn't been able to close. These Shrikes are kind of holding back. Hopefully they're fast enough. What speed do Shrikes have? Our sh Shrikes are fast enough to get away from Cersei's, right? Oh, here's the Shrike. Shrike charges the Cersei. And it pushes it back, but not enough firepower to break the shield. Let's see, here's the main the main event. Ooh, this carrier. Carrier has been rushed by the Moras. Ooh, there's a ram. Ooh, the explosion did quite a bit of damage to the Mora. That was an explosion kill. Oh, and here's another carrier down. So these SO ships have successfully broken through the beams and are attacking the back line. Yes, and here's here comes the another SO1. There's that accelerated ammo feeder plus Mjolnir. It's just a lot of DPS. Oh, these Geminis are falling. These Geminis are falling quickly. There's another Gemini down. Crack shipping is going to lose its fighter cover. The beam kiting. Just can't get the job done because safety overrides with its double di dissipation is a natural defense. Natural defense against beam kites. That very high dissipation. There's the overload and the contenders, the rail guns, some talons chipping in. This is not going well for crack shipping. Not going well at all. SO is just too powerful against beams. I haven't seen these Shrikes do all of that much this so far, to be perfectly honest. I've seen the Moras do extremely well. I've seen these um, Vanguards do very well. Haven't seen the Shrikes doing much. On this side, um, ooh, they're, let's see, this one is, it looks like it got a lot of weapons disabled by Sabos, and it's getting, it's getting hunted down by that Vanguard. Yes, the Vanguard has a lot of kinetic DPS, has a lot of energy DPS. The Cerseys cannot stand up to these SO vanguards. I think this fight is nearly over. We'll see whether or not they can get the kills fast enough to avoid SR, but it's still 65%. Now the AI is actually managing its weapon groups pretty well. It got the shields down with the, uh, with the light machine guns, and then it saved up to fire the Mjolnirs once the shields were down. Let's see. Anything else? Oh, just a swarm over here. Let's concentrate on these smaller fights. It's probably going to be a little more interesting, but I think this is only going to end one way. This is a bit of an AI der derp. This Vanguard sh should back off. It's faster because it says so. It should back off and vent and then come back in. Um, the Cersei is, however, I think the Cersei is faster than an S.O. Mora, which is uh, a little a little depressing, but oh well. 
Here we go. This Cersei is fluxed out. Firing off its harpoons. Um, just not fast enough. This is uh, interesting. These ships just aren't... They're not closing. They should be fast enough to close. Alright, there we go. There's the flank. No, oh, there's accelerator ammo feeder. <laughs> and finally, here is a swarm of, of talons. And that'll do it. That is the match. So, crack shipping has fallen. Oh, crack shipping actually got totally annihilated. Their beam spam could not hold up to Esso's dissipation, and their carriers just got rushed. So there you have it. Crack shipping, after two extremely dominant wins, has fallen to Kissimmee's. Let's see, we've done soup in Safari John. Next we have Dizzy versus Randomness Inc. Now Dizzy submitted a variant like an hour and a half before it started. Are these variants correct? I hope these variants are correct. Because I'm not switching on at this point. Alright. Let's look at Dizzy's fleet. From a glance, we have Dooms on Dooms. Now, Dooms can be very good against Tempests. Let's look at the specifics. Oh, this is an interesting variant. So we have, I think this might be a hard counter cruiser. I think this Doom might be specifically designed to kill this fleet. Let's, and I say that because the burst PD lasers and the proximity charge launchers will deal with the mines from the other Doom and will deal with the Tempest's um, drones. Meanwhile, the salamanders will knock out engines for the mine system to then plant mines around. It also has two pulse lasers for damage, hardened subsystems, and reversed resistant flux conduits to stop any EMP from disabling it. It does have 16,000 capacitors, it's max capacitors, so it'll be able to stay in phase for a very long time, and when it needs to vent, the resistant flux capacitors will help it get that flux down quickly. I suspect this might be a hard counter doom specifically built for this one match. There are three of these gimmick dooms, and then omens, because everyone loves omens, even if it's not a spiker omen. Spiker omens are better. So we have the obvious omen with tactical laser for poking, PD for PD, salamander, which is boosted by the built-in ECCM, max caps and hardened shields for 10,000 effective shield hit points, hardened subsystems, and unstable injectors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there are a total of 15 salamanders in this fleet. That's very interesting. We'll see how these salamanders do. They are fighting against Randomness Inc. Ooh, Vera has given approval for this omen. Interesting. Next up is Randomness Inc. Now Randomness is using this Strike Doom with the very strange weapon groups on the AM blasters. Uh, heavy blasters, those, the burst PD lasers, which should be pretty good at shooting down mines, ITU for range, and it picked vents over caps, so it's going to have a harder time staying in phase, but an easier, an easier time recovering once it's out of phase. And Tempests! Attack Tempests with Pulse Laser, Ion Beam, and Reaper Torpedoes. We have Flux Distributor for that extra flux. Doesn't quite keep up, but it's pretty good, and it's enough to fire the Pulse Laser. Stabilized Shields. Uh, so I, I actually don't like stabilized shields on this. I like extended shields on a um, on a Tempest. And Hardened sub Subsystems. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 of these with that Reaper for that spike. All right. So it looks like we have a hard counter with these Dooms. I suspect this is Dizzy's one variant versus... Randomness Inc. and a Ridiculous Tempest Swarm. Let's fight Dizzy versus Randomness Inc. So, coming up, we have Dooms and Omens. And there's that Tempest Swarm with those nasty Terminator drones. Now, the AI does use Mind Strikes on Terminator drones, and the omens have EMP, 
So we'll see whether this fleet just shuts down. Ah, Vine was actually defeated. Oh, no! It just ran straight into it! It ran straight into the mine, that poor Tempest! Oh, and there's... The, the shields were in one direction. It was flamed out from a salamander. Oh, but there's the omen. The omen also got destroyed by a mine. So these frigates... Oh, there's a Tempest. The mines are tearing the frigates apart. I understand the Tempest because they have limited shields, but honestly, the Omen should not have died to a mine. Omens have 360 shields. They shouldn't die to mines. When they do, it's mainly an AI problem. Ooh, Heavy Blasters. Heavy Blasters. Why do those have Heavy Blasters? Oh, no. Uh, Dizzy, one of your variants is screwed up. Your variant, your variant got set to Kissimmee's, or your variant got set to the other side because I checked the hull mods or something. I don't know. I thought I hit reset. Um, Dizzy, would you like a restart to this battle since I screwed up your variant? Or are you willing to accept it? This has been the most shit show of a... Uh... Oh, that's the enemy doom. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's no, that's the three doom side. That's the three doom side. <laughs> Nemo, is, Nemo. Hey, I I gave the option. Dizzy. Um. Are you, No, no, no. Just uh, just one of them got switched. One of them got switched. One of the variants on Dizzy's side is wrong. Um, this variant is correct. This variant is wrong. This variant is correct. Well, yeah, I think I think Dizzy's winning anyway. Oh, oh, this has been this has been as a, as a presenter, I am on tilt between all these file problems and then the variants getting wrong. Luckily, next time is Nemo Nemo, and nothing nothing bad will happen with Nemo. Everything's gonna be perfect for Nemo. Aw, thanks, Shul. So these mines are just brutal. These three oh and the Tempest the Tempest was shielding from this mine, drifted into the other one. Probably the same thing happened over here. Dooms are pretty hard counters to Tempests. The mine took out both of those wings. Oh, it's just, uh, just a slaughter. This omen needs to be careful. Its own side. Uh, is this the last one? No, there's two omens left. Are two tempests left, but they're not going to uh, they're not going to last super long. They are probably going to get chased into the corners and killed. <laughs> well, it is true that I think Divi Dizzy gave me fifteen bits on the first stream. I've been bought. I have no integrity. There have been ten cents. Fifteen cents is enough to secure my loyalty. Actually, though, I, I screwed up Dizzy's side, didn't I? So. Uh. Here we go. Oh, there's the ion beam for the disable. Engines are down. You can see that this this EMP emitter actually does quite a bit of hard flux damage, and and hull damage too. Omens are great. I I do think omens need a price increase, to either six or seven deployment points. Seven might be excessive, but they are very strong. There's that tactical laser. There's the a mine, and the MP emitter gets the kill. Ah, Eternal Soldat has given me 16 bits. My goodness. <laughs> My God, it's almost enough to buy a piece of hard candy if this were if this were 50 years ago. All right, so we have Dizzy with three dooms to counter Tempests. 
Dooms do kill tempests. <laughs> uh, let's continue with the fight. We have Soldat versus No Pointer Exception. Because Soldat paid me, I'm going to reset. Nah, I'm just kidding. Let's take a look at Soldat's fleet. Now, is this mainly the same or is there some differences? I think I see differences in the fighters. So let's take a look. We have a Beam Sunder. This is the same Beam Sunder. It has Vulcans for point defense, some Atropos for killing, and extreme long range between Advanced Optics and ITU. This is going to have 1400 range on the hill backed up by two Gravitons, with enough flux to keep it firing most of the time, and three caps. One, two, three, four of these long range Beam Sunders. And then we have some SO Hammerheads. SO Hammerheads with light dual machine guns for the kinetic and two assault chain guns for the HE. A lot of DPS there, 600 each. And two hammers for the spike. Now it has 900 dissipation, which is, it's a slightly over dissipated in my opinion. So the shield plus weapon is 950, which means this is gonna build up flux extremely slowly. Hopefully it doesn't take too much damage though, because its capacity is low. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those SO hammerheads. And then we have one, two, three Zapum class carries. Let's see, this is the Hamzite. Zapum class drovers with a Falx and a Thunder. And four Salamanders. Okay, so four Salamanders backed up by ECCM. That's 12 Salamanders in the fleet. That could really flame out engines and allow these hammerheads and Sunders to do their business without any troubles. All right. So, Sunders and Hammerheads with some drovers. Up against no Pointer Exception with High Tech Bex Tech. Let's see, is this the same time as last time? This looks like the same fleet as last time, but let me look in. So we have a Astral with two longbows and four daggers. So this is the classic kinetic HE punch that immediately gets teleported back and reloaded. We have a squall locust combo doing both shield support and anti-fighter. Let's see, we've expanded missile racks to help the missiles and expanded deck crew for the fighters. And we have a ring of PD lasers backed up by advanced optics with some vents. This is interesting. So on the one hand, the vents are way overkill for the weapon flux, but on the other, it'll help it to recover faster if it needs to lower its shields. I'll be honest, I, I think I prefer higher capacity, but meh, not my ship. Next up is some of these support apogees, and these support apogees have done extremely well in all past rounds. They have a hill and some tacks for long range beams, backed up by ITU, that's 1400 range, that actually matches the Sunders. Stabilized shields, which is just a good call on an apogee. Squalls for the anti-missile support, and some PD lasers for point defense. Expanded missile racks, and vents. One, two, three of those. And we have, oh, stolen frigate. So this is the change. This is one of the change. So this is stolen from Vera, it's looking like. Yes, this is this is a copy of Vera's. Um, this is probably no pointer exceptions, one variant that they get to change. And here it is. There's the Reaper. There's the AM Blaster. 10 caps with hardened shields is, is 10,000 hit points. Hardened subsystems, unstable injectors, and, yep, normal weapon groups. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 of them. So no pointer exception, and I'm going to do the reset there. No pointer exception has stolen 10 omens. So we have capital, 3 apogees, and 10 omens. Oh, <laughs> 10 omens, yes. All right. Let's do Soldat versus No Pointer Exception. Here come Hammers and Hammerheads and Saunders. Carriers are falling in behind. Oh, and isn't that, that beautiful swarm of omens? I suspect these are escort orders, which is a little a little unfortunate. It's kind of better when the omens can swarm, but not much you can do about this. Oh, this, this omen has gone in by itself. That's really not good omen. Oh no. So the topside curse 
has killed an omen. So I did a reset this time. Here come the support apogee. Oh, there's a little bit of damage there from the support apogee. Now that the omen isn't getting isn't getting focused, this fleet is holding out. Now this side is not SO, whereas these hammerheads are SO, so all it really needs to do is hold out. I mean kills are better. Um fighter strike, but no sabos is ineffective, but it gets teleported back. There are ten omens, but I'm having tr Okay. So the omens are screening. Ooh, that's... Ooh, AM Blaster drives up the Flux. Squalls... Ooh, another Omen down. Now, where are the... Where are the Longbows? There's one Sabo. Gets the hit! So far, the Omens are actually not doing extremely well. The Omens are just getting focused down by the Hammerheads. And then... Yeah, the Omens are dying like flies. This Hammerhead's... Hammerhead Sunder combination. Um, really, just SO Hammerheads really are beating these, these Sunders. Or really are beating the Omens. I'm not sure how many Omens are left. So it turns out that S SO Hammerheads lose to Medusas. And it seems like Omens lose to SO Sunders. Oh, this carrier has gotten too far forward. It's coming under Hillfire. But the Apogee... The Apogee just isn't... He didn't press it. Now, I will note that the Omens are keeping this fleet distracted, and their peak performance time is is ticking down. Oh, there go those support missiles. Are we going to have a fighter strike to finish it off? It looks like the fighters are targeting something else. They're not targeting the vulnerable destroyers. Oh, and actually, this Hill Sunder is extremely effective anti-fighter. That's surprising. The Hill Sunder is shooting down the fighters. This, under, this uh, hammerhead is pressing, but the squalls, the squalls are doing a very good job of pushing things back. I think all but two of the omens are dead. The omens have just folded. That is shocking. They have been a dominant variant in the past. Maybe they don't need a DP increase. Now, this astral so far has not done any damage. I'm not sure exactly why. But I suspect it's the Graviton overloads the shields of the fighters, and then the hill gets an instant kill. And then the Sunder turns, and it sweeps across. Not to mention the Falxes. The Falxes are helping as well. But so far, this Astral has zero kills. Yeah, look at this. That's, uh, that's all that survived of that, of that wave. Just four bombers. It, it launched a single torpedo... And that single torpedo then got shot down. Okay, SO SO is hit its cap. SO is ticking down. Oh yeah, the omen is just staying too close. Alright. So far the core of this fleet, these three apogees remain undamaged. If it can hold out for long enough, if it can hold out for long enough, they might outlast. But it's not looking very good, because I think this might be the the last omen. Yep, last omen. They die nearly instantly to those assault chain guns. All right, it's time for the swarm. It's time for these hammerheads to close in on the apogees and see whether they can get the job done. Now, the apogees have very strong shields, but this is a lot of firepower. Yes, the shields are almost full. One more Apogee, or one more Hammerhead needs to just charge in, and it'll tear this Apogee apart. Oh, and there... Oh, the four Beam Sunders! The four Beam Sunders just melt the Astral. I wasn't even looking until the very end. These Hammerheads are hard counters to the Omens, and they do really well against... Oh, look at these... This, this Sunder hammerhead combo is working so well. So I think that um 
it's a little strange to say, considering that that Astral has done well in the past, but that Astral actually, I think, almost performed worse than any other... Maybe the, vic maybe the point defense victory was worse than that Astral, but that Astral scored v practically no hits the entire fight. Um, the Beam Sunders were excellent at shooting down the fighters. Just truly excellent. Woo! Well, that was surprising. I saw a lot of... I thought Soldat said... Soldat was like, oh, I'm definitely going to lose. And then that was a really kind of a crushing victory. Those omens really underperformed. Okay, now we have Lightning JC versus Is Your Mojo Fly? My mojo's very fly. Now I see... I think this might be the same fleet as last time. Wrong fleet. All right. All right. Mojo. What player number is Mojo? Someone send me the right send me the right fleet. Mojo is fleet 13. Well, I can I can switch it out. I just need let me check whether that got sent to me and I missed it. Or if not, someone send that to me real quick. Fleet 13. Um... <laughs> Let's see. All right, there's the ping. Astralter has sent me a new one. Yes, this was also this was also titled um, player zero instead of player. Let's see, you should be thirteen. Yes. So, yeah. All right. So let me change the numbers on those. And that the technical difficulties. Changing fleet file numbers. Okay. And it's not working. So let me go to the heading. The heading is probably wrong. Mm -mm. Okay. I'm fixing the heading. So this is this is caused by an unfortunate problem where the um the fleet tester mod actually is uses a different syntax in the in the file heading than the AI battles does. Okay. Actually, let me just Okay, Astralter just sent me another new file. I am just going to sub that in. Okay. There we go. Is this the right fleet? Let me just wait for Is Your Mojo Fly? Yes, this is the correct fleet. Yay! <laughs> Let's take a look at... at uh, Lightning JCs, and then is your mojo flies fleets. Gah! All right, Lightning. What number are you? You're number five. <laughs> so we have the hero kite, which single-handedly killed a cruiser last time with its linked reapers. We have the... QD Legion. I love Gauss Cannon Legions. They just do a good job. With three broadswords, a perdition, some harpoons, and some maulers. And I think this is going to be 1960 range on the Gauss Cannons. 50 vents to keep it firing, and six caps. We have the Suppression Mora. One broadsword, two perditions. With railguns and annihilators. We have the Ludic Might Vindicator. With the built-in gun near. Some HVDs for long range. Locust for anti-fighter and anti-frigate. 
and salamanders and ions for pinning things down. We have the Judgmental Cruiser Punisher. Oh, this is a long-range Punisher. Normally we see SO. This has the 2 HVD, 1 Heavy Mauler combo, and ITU, so that's going to give it um, 1,400 range, a little bit of point defense, a little bit of needlers, and heavy armor. Standoff Destroyer, Enforcer, 1,200 range, with again 2 HVDs, 1 Heavy Mauler, another of those, and some Lasher Frigates. Let's see, Pappas says, can I explain the specific ability on the ship and we weapon pack ships? Sure. So, the Vindicator is a long-range siege cruiser. So it has a built-in dedicated targeting core. The Gunnir Cannon, however, has 1,500 range by default. And when it fires, the shot splits up into um, multiple uh, HE rounds. So this is a long-range siege cruiser. The Punisher is a light, low-tech cruiser that still has pretty good armor, and it has burst jets, so it can get in and out fast. Let's see, it has rail guns, not light needlers, my bad, and it has a tornado hornet launcher to uh, back it up. All right, these are vanilla. We have, let's see, these are Ludic Church um, variants. It's just a different color. It's a beautiful green paint job. This has some kinetic with a light duel, some HE and light assault cannon, Sabos for the overload, and reinforced bulkhead so it doesn't explode quite as fast. There is one, two, three, four, nope, just three of those, and then some Lud's Hammer SO Lashers. With hammers for the kill, light assault guns for the HE, and LMGs for both point defense and kinetic. Cool, one, two, three of those. So six Lashers, three Regulars, three SO, two Standoff Enforcers, one Standoff Punisher, one Standoff Vindicator, uh, Mora, Long Range Legion, and the wonderful, wonderful Reaper Kite with four Reapers in linked groups. And I'm going to do the reset there. There's the reset. Up against is your Mojo Fly. We have the new variant Vultures. This is the same Vulture as before. It's got that ever-popular dual Sabos for the Overload in a linked weapon group with the Heavy Blaster and two Assault Chain Guns for the HE and Energy kill after the Overload. And it's SO. One, two, three of those. We have SO Punishers with the Sabos, two Assault Chain Guns, and a Heavy Needler. So the Heavy Needler has slightly, slightly longer range. But mainly its purpose is alpha, because if you want sustained DPS, then a heavy machine gun is just better on an SO build. One of these, two, three of those. And we have the Snoop Ion class Drovers with claws for that EMP, brutal EMP. And then Ion Torpedo Racks. One, two, three of those. Let's see, I forgot to mention, vultures have point defense drones. So they have a little cloud of kinetic drones. All right. Time for a, a lot of mod ships, actually. A lot of mod ships on this side. So let's fight Lightning JC versus Is Your Mojo Fly. Now, the Legion and the Vindicator are forming a line next to each other. That really wants to happen. Between the long-range Kinetic and the long-range HE, they can do a lot of damage, as we've seen in previous rounds, when they're teamed up together. Kite, no! So this time, Southside is sending the scout, and it's the lone Kite. Kite, don't die immediately. You still have to put two of those Reapers into an enemy. Oh god, no! Oh god, why? So the Heavy Needler there, it's alpha damage backed up by the Sabos, just murderated the kite. Here is the Claws. Claws are coming in, EMPing everything in sight. The Lasher is flamed out. Now there are Locusts on this Vindicator. On this side, these ships have very long range, but they're too... Um, Against SO ships, 
against SO ships that charge, their low DPS is a problem. So two HVDs and a heavy mortar is very low DPS. Very low DPS. There are some harpoons. Ooh, there's the overload from the Sabos and the claws. This Punisher is completely locked down. However, nope, not enough harpoons. Not enough harpoons to get the overload. This Punisher is overloaded, but nothing, no follow-up. The Gungnir, excuse me, the Vindicator is getting rushed. Its long range doesn't mean anything against SO. Let's see, are these claws? Nope, the claws are going for the... Claws are going for the Lasher, and it's locked it down. The Sabos and Heavy Needler has, have lowered the shields. Oh, a little bit of fire support. A little bit of fire support, but uh, really not very much. Ion Torpedoes. Oh, the Overload and four more Ion Torpedoes. Oh, this ship is completely, completely offline. Luckily, another Punisher has come in, and this battle line... Oh, Lasher gets the Overload. Mora is down on this side, though. Where's that Legion? Legion, okay, Legion's up here. Oh, Legion is about to get uh, double teamed. Yep, there's that heavy blaster and assault chain guns into the rear of the Legion. The Legion is not going to be able to survive this. It is surrounded and toast. On this side, there's a numerical advantage. It's four versus one, cruiser, destroyer, and two frigates. And that's going to get a kill. Mainly the Lashers. The Lashers the lashers are the majority of the DPS there. The Legion is down. Uh, let's see, the, this, this Vanguard is actually doing what it's supposed to do. Um, Long-range bombardment. This is pretty close. The Vanguard is being pressed, but its flank is covered. Ooh. Locust is a uh, locust is a good amount of damage. It's a heavy heavy gunner hit. This Punisher is totally locked down, but if it holds on for long enough, it might get help. Oh, it's not going to hold on for long enough. If only that kite were still here, that kite could have sunk in two Reapers right there. All right, Lasher is Lasher's overloaded. Lasher's down. This Vindicator is doing well. But it's facing off a lot, a lot of enemies. Oh, there's a Lasher! A Lasher has found the Mora. Not Mora. The Lasher has found the Drover. If it keeps up the attack, it might get the kill. That would be a very good use of DP. Oh, this Gungnir is getting... It's getting pressed in close range. It has low DPS weapons. Yeah, low DPS weapons was just the wrong choice for this fight. That's the kill. Um, Lasher got clawed. The Lasher got clawed, and it's being warded off. Um, I think this fight is mainly over. Yep, that Heavy Needler is an inspired choice. I agree with Vera's analysis. The Alpha, it's less sustained than a heavy machine gun, but the Alpha has really proven its worth against smaller ships. Sabos, overload. Assault chain guns for massive firepower. Not sure why these are backing off. You're zero flux. You're both zero flux. Why are you backing off from that enforcer? Oh, that was really, really st strange. Like, really strange. Why are these vultures suddenly... Why are these vultures suddenly timid? That was really strange. This is something I've noticed in campaign a little bit, too. Every once in a while, when an enemy overloads, all the other ships become extremely scared of it. Now, it might be that they were waiting for this third one to come in for the flank, but there was, there was really no reason for it. <laughs> so that was, the, that was the quick burn jets of the Punisher. It burn jetted into its ally and didn't do any damage, but it instantly flamed out. All right, up here we have two Lashers are still standing. But um, the Lashers are still standing, but they're just being locked down by the Claws. The claws have very little DPS, but they don't really need DPS against Lashers. And here comes a Vulture, using its ablative shield to, to uh, escape any firepower. 
Oof. That's a lot of DPS. Shul says maybe the AI put an avoid order on it. Maybe it did, but if they do, then that's a bug. Because there's... That was two cruisers attacking a overloaded destroyer. They should not back off. And they backed off... Um, they backed off like thousands of units. Okay. So, we have a solid victory for the fewer than 10 angry enough players <laughs> it was not is nine ships and it was called 10 before i didn't catch that name change <laughs> so is your mojo fly advances another round their so completely negated the range advantage of these ships um range means nothing when the enemy charges straight in unfortunately okay and next we have draw versus HG Scout. This is our last fight of the night. Let us now. Let's see. Are these these are correct? These are the correct variants for everyone. Correct fleets. I hope so. Cool. Let's take a look at Draw's convoy. The Draw's convoy has a victory. This victory has four HVDs, two heavy needlers, a very solid kinetic setup. The built-in HE assault guns. This one has ion cannons on the front for disabling. First PD and four devastators, so the rear half really doesn't like really doesn't like fighters. And four sabos. Now we'll see if the Paragon Shields, the Fortress Shield, can counteract the Sabo. Now this victory has a very narrow forward shield, so I hope it doesn't get flanked. ITU, resistant flux conduits, advanced turret gyro, and gunnery control AI. Max vents and a cap. We have the Venture. This Venture is a brick. It has heavy armor, flax and heavy burst PD, and harpoons and sabos. We have a missile brick. We have HVD and heavy mauler combo. Again, going for range over DPS with hardened shields, hardened subsystems. Interesting. We'll see if we'll see if a destroyer lives long enough to really need hardened subsystems. Two Light Mortars, two Vulcans, and some Sabos. Two of those. We have Escort Drover with Longbows. Longbows on a Drover are are okay. They're, the only downside is that the, the Reserve Deployment, it will bring Bombers back to life, but it won't increase the wing size. Again, Hardened Subsystems, Expanded Deck Crew, and ECCM Package. We have... Mule, a support mule, with two Sabos, Harpoon, and Broadsword. This is the same as last time, I think. It's got a lot of missiles, it's got some hangar, got ECCM. One, two, three, three of those, and the Shepherd. It's basically a mascot, but as a Salamander. Salamanders are nice. And facing them is HG Scouts, Bounty Hunters. Now this is, yes, this is a Paragon that we've seen before. It has four autopulse lasers, two heavy needlers for kinetic damage, some mini blasters for point defense, uh, more mini blasters, burst PDs, and salamanders with stabilized shields, IPD AI, hardened shields, flux distributor, expanded magazines, and advanced turret gyros. With the expanded magazines, it does have a ton of alpha from its autopulse. We'll see what that alpha does, whether it gets, um, whether it gets wasted or not. Now we have some drovers with hex blades. Hex blades, um, heavy fighters with dual mini blaster cannons, uh, a system which increases rate of fire, and these will become three to four when reserve deployment is active. I see two salamanders and flare guns. Woo, flare guns. One, two, three of these. Some SO. Interesting, SOIPDAI, hammerheads, ah, class destroyers. Let's see, so this is kinetic damage from the light dual machine guns, HE damage from the assault chain guns, flares, because why not? 
and vents and caps. One, two, three, four of these hammerheads. A Tempest, Defense Tempest with Heavy Burst PD, Pulse Laser, Flare Gun, ITU and Hardened Subsystems. And finally, a Monitor, Flax built in, some Mini Blasters, Stabilized Shields, Hardened Shields, but it only has 300 degree shields. It has a hole in the back, so we'll see how that goes. All right, so we have Reset Variants. And Reset Variants again, because why not? We have Draw with the Convoy, with a good victory against HG Scout with the Paragon and Destroyers and Fighters. Let's see how that goes. Coming in from the south, there's that victory. And it does have a heavy escort on it and a medium escort on the venture. Coming from the north, SO Hammerheads leading the way, fighter escorts, and some frigates on the wings. It looks like this is escorting the Paragon, which is what it should be doing. Let's see, there, the lone scout is from the north this time. I have noticed it from both sides. It got a little too close. It gets pushed back, but the low DPS of these guns just doesn't, just doesn't do enough. Now, this is, these are IPD, IPD AI, so they are actually ignoring the flares. So those broadswords are actually, uh, are slightly counteracted. Is this broad, broadside? Oh, there's the overload. There's the, there's the harpoons from the pod. This hammerhead is in trouble. The victory is victorying. Its point defense is, uh, taking out those hex blades. Hammerhead down here died to missiles. This hammerhead gets pushed back. Oh, this victory. This victory really is charging in. The Paragon is attacking the Venture. The Venture is kind of a brick, and um, auto pulses actually have fairly low DPS. Oh, it's wasting. It's wasting all its auto pulse charges on the drones. That's what always happens to me with auto pulses under AI control. It just wasted a huge amount of DPS on those drones. What's this victory doing? This victory is kind of hanging out. Um, oh, the alpha damage from those heavy needlers. Heavy needlers are truly, truly ac excellent. It activated its system to burst forward and keep up, and it gets the kill. Victories have been probably the most solid capital of the tourney. I have really have seen a lot of, of good victory a lot of good victory variants. Now, this victory is chasing after the drover, which is not great. Um, that's, uh, there's a capital right there. You could turn 90 degrees. However, that Paragon's not really doing all that much either. It's kind of busy with some fighters. Oh, victory is, victory is turning. Mule cast down. Mule cast was killed by a hammerhead. Okay. Victory is charging forward. Capital on capital duel. There's a lot of alpha damage. Oh, look at this difference in flux. Between the flux efficient auto pulses and the heavy needlers, this paragon is seriously winning. Seriously winning. Okay, we have the vent. It is kind of armor tanking now. Oh, just just the hardened shields. The hardened shields on this paragon have not taken much damage at all. Now it is taking it is taking shots to its front that it really doesn't need to take. Um, why is it lowering its shields quite that much? There's no reason for the paragon to have taken any armor damage so far. Like, is it trying to do a um an armor tank kind of thing? So there go those, um, oh, some Sabos inbound. Did those Sabos impact? I think they got Fortress Shield. The Fortress Shield is extremely powerful. Oh, that's an overload. Yeah, this victory, this victory simply cannot deal with this Paragon. The Hardened Shield plus Fortress Shields 
And flux efficient guns are way too much. Way too much. Um, if if this hammerhead had had DPS and closed in and was flanking from the side, it would be a different story. But really, this this HVD heavy mauler hammerhead is not very effective. We've actually already seen this Paragon lose in a different fight, but this fight it did the trick and it killed the victory. All right, there are still quite a few destroyers left standing. Um, it's conceivable that they could kill the Paragon if they swarm it. So I'm not, this, this fight is not decided yet. Even wasting all that auto pulse, it still has charges to spare, thanks to its um, expanded charges. Hmm. The hex blades are actually doing a really good job, just by being there with their shields. They're cluttering up the battle space. They're drawing fire, and they're stopping long range fire from really doing anything. The Venture is a brick, but it can't survive forever. Its mining drones have actually drawn and wasted a lot of charges. Oh, Tempest down. Hammerhead over here, one. And there we go. This is doing an excellent job, this monitor. Um, it's tied up a huge amount of fleet resources. It's taken basically no damage. There's been some discussion about whether or not to use monitors or omens. In this case, this monitor is much better than an omen would be. Um, but this is kind of its unique thing for it to just be right in the middle of the enemy's fleet like this. Usually, these ships are not as effective as this. Oh, Paragon gets another kill. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah, nothing in this fleet can stand up against that Paragon. One of the beautiful things about Autopulse is that right now, it's building up effective DPS. Every second that a Paragon is under Fortress Shield or just flying around is a second where its Autopulses are building up their charges again. I am very impressed with how the Monitor handled its shields there. With a, with a hole in the shields. Oh, and there's that burst. Burst straight through the hammerhead. Hammerhead cannot deal with paragons. I think this fight is effectively over. We'll see how long it takes for this, uh, for this paragon to pack, catch anything. Because all the other flanking ships have died. It's just the Paragon plus carriers and the one monitor. Look at those hex blades. Not a huge amount of DPS, but they're going. There's a timeout. Now everyone's set to Reckless. And Hammerhead just instantly, instantly killed by that quad auto pulse with expanded magazines. And the hex blades are swarming the mule. There's the kill. I'm just gonna speed this up. There we go. And last ship. Swarm, swarm hex blades. And there we go. A long fight. And finally, a win for that Paragon. So, there were quite a few kills. All the SO Hammerheads and the Tempest were killed. But in the end, 
this Paragon was just too tough, too tough a ship for the convoy to handle. Okay, that is the end of our matches today. I'm very sorry for all the uh, technical difficulties that we had, <laughs> um, but it was a good fight, a lot of good matches. We have seen the fall of crack shipping, and we've seen um, Vera almost get held off. Vera's fleet still won because it's omens on the flanks, but that victory was capable of holding off the missile spam of the Falcons. It was very impressive to last as long as it did. All right. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you had a good time. Next, let me let me put up the announcement. The next stream will be on Monday. It will be at 7.30 UTC on Nemo Nemo's channel. That's his usual time. Shout out to Nemo Nemo. Nemo is awesome. Um, you're very welcome, everyone. I, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me let me look at the Star Sector Twitch. Let me see if there's anyone to raid. We can uh, oop not Twitch. Star Sector, yeah Twitch. I want to see if there's anyone we can raid, and uh, and just be like, wow, 140 people. Well, let's see. There's a there's a French there's a French streamer with one and a half thousand people. That probably won't do too much. There is. Someone else with 274. Wow, there's a lot of people watching Star Sector right now. Let's pick some of the... Let's pick some of the small people. There is... Da, 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 da. Let me take a look at... Da, da, da. Disnoff. Someone said to do Disnoff. Do you want to do you want to do Disnoff? They are they already have 274 people, but sure, we can do Disnoff. All right. So let me D I S N O F. Wait, don't support booting. Should I not do Disnoff? What's going on, Nate Wash? Oh, botting. Hmm. Hmm, I see controversy. Controversy in the stream. Well, cool. I'm going to go... Uh... There's the re request, so let's do the raid. Yeah, I have a... Uh, I normally do smaller streamers, but I had a request for Disnoff. So if people... Want, okay, now I have requests for other people. Well, I already I already hit the raid button, so... There you go, that raid is that raid is launched onto Disnoff. Okay, I'm going to cut my stream now. It was great. Great for all of you to show up. Have a good night.